Okay, good day. I am Professor McCulley. This is Honors Algebra 2, and this is the lesson for section 5.4, Polynomials and Technology. Let's get right to it. Today, we're going to use the graphing calculator to find the zeros of a function and find the relative extrema of a function. So what does that look like? Well, I have this graph here, and I have it marked in a, a couple of different place, points that we are going to be concerned with today. And so right off the bat, we see that A, E, and D are points where it crosses the x-axis. Those things are going to be known as zeros. We see right here that this point here is at 0, f of 0. And what that means is I'm going to take 0 and I'm going to plug it into the function. And that is the, the f of 0 is the y-coordinate of this particular point. And so... A uh, couple of new concepts that we've seen but haven't discussed exactly with technology is the concept of a relative maximum. Now, a relative maximum is just that. There is no absolute maximum in this particular equation or this particular function because it is going to continue to go up all the way to the right over here. So there is no top value because it's always going to continue to get bigger. And there is no bottom value because it's always going to tend to get smaller. But relative to these points in this general vicinity here, this is the highest point. So that is going to be known as a relative maximum. So in this case, B F of B and B being the x value, and then the point being the x value, and then the y value, or the function value, once you've plugged B in. We all have over here a relative minimum, because it is the smallest point relative to these general points. And again, this function has no absolute minimum, because it's going to continue to fall forever as we go to the left. So... Relative maximum or minimums are often referred to as extrema or turning points. And what I mean by a turning point is it is turning from increasing to decreasing. And then here is a turning point from decreasing to increasing. And if a polynomial is of degree n, then a function or a graph can have at most n minus 1 turning points. So just as an assumption here, since it crosses the x-axis in one, two, three places, this is most likely a third degree polynomial. And since I put it into Desmos to get this graph, it is a third degree polynomial. And it can have one, two, or three minus one turning points. Using technology to find real zeros and relative extrema, a zero of a function is where the function crosses the x-axis. In Desmos, click on the places where the gra graph crosses the x-axis and the coordinate will appear. To find relative extrema, a relative extrema is a maximum or minimum point on the graph. In Desmos, a gray dot will appear on the curve. Okay, so we are going to do some examples and for the practice work, we are not going to follow the directions in the book because the book isn't the book questions aren't quite as specific as the ones that I'm going to be asking. So we're going to be using these as our instructions. And when you look on Connect Ed, you will see some different instructions for a few of the problems. But our first example, we are going to use Desmos to graph the function f of x equals x to the third plus 4x squared minus 5x. And so we're going to use Desmos to graph the function, and then we're going to use Desmos to estimate the real zeros and estimate the extrema. So let's go to Desmos, and let's type in that function. So I want to make sure that I'm in projector mode so that you guys can see that. Yep, we're good. And so I am going to type on my computer here, f parenthesis of x is equal to x raised to the third and then I have to go back because I've forgotten already plus 4x squared minus 5x all right so excuse me plus 
x squared minus 5x and that seems right and it is okay so I need to change some I, I see a relative minimum right here and I see three X intercepts we're gonna have to find those um, but I clearly have a maximum that I can't see so I'm going to come over to this uh, wrench here and fix the graph settings and I see everything along the x-axis that I want to see, but I don't see everything along the y-axis that I want to see. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type in a new number for a y or the top of the y. And I'm going to put in 20 to start and that one doesn't work. So we're going to make it 30 and there now I see everything. Okay. So let's go back here and it says use Desmos to estimate the real zeros of the function. So I'm going to go back to Desmos and I'm going to click on all of these points here. These gray points. And we see that there is a x-intercept at 5, or excuse me, at negative 5, at 0, and at 1. So I'm going to come back here and so I'm going to... Let's Part B, x intercepts at x equals negative 5, comma, 0, and 1. And then B, or excuse me, C says use Desmos to element to estimate the extrema of the function. Okay, we can do that as well. And so we'll go to Desmos here and we'll see there's a gray dot and there's also a gray dot. When I click on those, they become dark and we can read them. So um, our relative maximum is going to be at negative 3.189 comma 24.193. So let's see if I can remember that. Negative 3.189. Oops, excuse me. And then I need the Y value, 24.193. 24.193. And then I have a relative minimum at, let's go back, 0.523. Negative one point three seven eight. All right. Next example. This example says we need to draw a fifth degree polynomial with zeros at negative four, negative one, and three, and a relative extrema at negative two. Okay, so let's draw some, oops, get rid of that. Let's draw some axis here. Let's label our axis. We've got X and Y and a fifth degree polynomial. Okay. So the fifth degree polynomial means that the end behavior is going to be either, or the end behavior is going to be opposite. We can draw it however we want, but um, let's type in, or let's draw in some of the other values first. So I've got zeros at negative four, negative one, and negative three. So, or positive three. So I've got negative four, we'll put negative one right there. We'll put positive three right there. And I have a relative maximum at two. So I'm going to put uh, or negative two, so I'm gonna put negative two there. And so it looks to me like I'm gonna have to come up through four, have my maximum, and then go back down, and then go up. So I think what I'm going to do is since it's a fifth degree polynomial and they only give me three zeros, I'm going to add 
two zeros in. So I'm going to add a zero out here and I'm going to add a zero out here. I can come up and down. Oops. And um, since they don't tell us what they are, I can just going to make them up. I'm just going to say that this is, um, let's say, negative 10 and let's make this 8, I guess. And so I am going to come down through here. Then I'm going to go up through four, I'm going to put my maximum at two. I want to go down through one. I'm going to go up through three, and then I'm going to go back down through eight. And even though they don't say it, and it's not a very good curve because I'm working on my tablet here, um, but I have my maximum here at negative two. And this would have a negative leading coefficient because it goes up to the left and down to the right. And I'm sure that there are plenty of other possibilities that would also satisfy this particular example. Um, but this is the one I'm going with. All right, last thing I wanna talk about is dirty solutions. And a dirty solution, I call it a dirty solution because it's a solution that I don't want you guys using very often. Uh, but in a pinch, you can use Desmos to solve equations. So if you've got, if they ask you to solve something and you have no clue, um, you can use Desmos. And well, what we'll do is there are two methods that we're going to use to do solutions. And so the first one is you can make the left side of the equation a function and then the right side of the equation as a function and then find the x values of any points of intersection. The other method that you could use is you could move all of the terms of the, an equation to one side of it, either the left or right. So it's basically moving everything to one side and getting zero. You can then graph that and find the x-intercept because you'll have a function equal to zero and wherever it crosses the x-axis is where the function is equal to zero. And then I want to finish it off. And again, I don't want you using this very often and it certainly will not excuse your need to learn the algebra, but this method only gives approximations and you should only use it as a last resort. But let's try one. And so we're going to solve this using Desmos. And I have this function here, x to the third minus four x squared plus two equal to x minus seven. So I'm gonna go back to Desmos and I'm gonna clear out what I had and I'm gonna hit this home button so I start with a regular graph setting and I'm going to put the left side of the equation, this x to the third minus four x squared uh, plus two as a function itself. So I'm gonna say it's y equals x raised to the third minus four x squared and then it was plus two is what I had there, pretty sure, plus two. And then I'm going to make the right side of the equation another function. So I'm gonna put uh, y equals x minus seven. Y equals x minus seven. And we see a bunch of points of intersection. So I need to move this a little bit so that I can get these points right here. And Again, I'm using this first method, make the left side of the equation a function and the right side of the equation function, and then find the x values of any point of intersection. So we don't care about the y values. All we're looking for is the x values. So our solutions will be x equals, and then we'll go to Desmos, and we'll click on this first point of intersection right there, and the x value is negative 1.388. So our first solution, negative 1.388. Then we'll go back to Desmos. We'll click on this second point of intersection. 1.813 is our second solution, our second approximated solution. 1. Point, what is it, 383? I already forgot. I suppose I should check. 1.813. So let's erase that and fix that. 1.813. And then our final solution is 3.576.
0.576. And those are our solutions to that, or excuse, at least our approximate solutions to this equation. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. So the Mandalorian fun fact of the day, the Mandalorian is inspired and in is essentially a modern interpretation of an old Japanese manga movie known as Lone Wolf and Cub. And so here is a picture of the manga. Here is an old 70s movie. And here is our titular character, the Mandalorian, and his little cub, Baby Yoda, and he cute. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. Have a good day.